Hello and welcome to this interview series ahead of DevOps Live on the 6th and 7th of March at Excel London. I'm Stuart Crowley, editor of Techerati, and today my guest is Jose Calderon. He's the Vice President Software Engineer at JP Morgan Chase. Jose is set to appear at DevOps Live in March, but today we're going to go back in time and talk about three significant years in Jose's life that has shaped his life and career, and also why he's at DevOps Live in March. So welcome, Jose. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you so much for your time and the invitation. So, how what have you chosen as your first significant year and why? Uh, it was 2012. Uh, I graduated from high school around 2010, 2011. And in 2012, I had the crazy idea to create my own company. You know? um, if I tell you I was a scared moment, I would lie to you. It was a terrifying moment for me, but I saw the opportunity and, and I took it, uh, even though I, I didn't have too much experience in the, in the corporate world. Um, but it's one of those uh, things that you do in life that teach you so much and they give you so many uh, adventures and experiences um, that I, looking back uh, in the past, I definitely select that year as a very grateful and, and rewarding kind of uh, era of my life. What are some of the adventures that you did have during that time? It was it traveling the world to to work on this uh, this business project, or what were it were the uh, exciting adventures that you had? Well, there was traveling. There was traveling. No, no, no international traveling. We didn't get that that far. Uh, we did manage to to get uh, a few ranches uh, on 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 the country. So national wise, there was a lot of traveling. That that for sure. Um, uh, mostly around facing different problems with different clients uh, and having the opportunity to speak with the, the owners of other businesses no? and trying to solutionize at that level. Uh, that gave you a, it gave me a, a completely different perspective for, for what I was uh, working at the time, which was uh, a position inside a, a corporation. No? But when you are facing uh, the, the, the problems from the people who are leading the business, it gives you a, a completely different uh, perspective and, and reality. What was probably one of the biggest takeaways that you learned about actually being a leader, a business owner, and, and being at the helm of that business? What are some of those key kind of leadership qualities that you feel, feel that you got away from that? Well, uh, first that you don't wear one hat. No, there is no one role definition for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to do pretty much a little bit of everything. And you, you need to have the mentality to jump in and help whatever you need to help. So I guess for me, it was the, the mentality of you have to be uh, very flexible and shape and, and have the ability to just adapt to whatever situation and learn very quick, whatever you need to learn to pick up on that uh, I think that's pretty much it. Be flexible and, and adapt as much as possible to, to the changes as quick as you can. No? And, and to do that, for me, it was learning how to learn and, and, and uh, realizing, oh, uh, podcast, for example, was a, a thing on that time that I remember listening a lot um, instead of books. And I realized, oh, I actually prefer to learn by listening compared to, to reading. No, So it was a, a, a time to also reflect of how do I grow individually uh, as, a, as a leader that, that I remember from that time, yeah. Let's take a kind of uh, hypothetical situation that if you took that risk today in 2024 instead of 2012, what do you think would be different? And what do you think would be the same? Uh, oof, so many things. Um, like I said, at that time I was terrified, no? I didn't know exactly what to expect. Now I look at the change as opportunity and not something that's scary and obscure. Um, there is, even in the, the worst situations that I faced on that time, there was always a silver lining 
and something to 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 learn and to just stand up and 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 find a new opportunity that takes you to something better um so that would be my approach if i if i face a a, a, a hopefully not a, a difficult situation in 2024 um it will be with a different eyes it will be with the eyes of well, where, where is the opportunity you know what i mean um where, where is the, the silver lining out of the situation where is the learning opportunity and not so much about complaining and whining oh my god it's changing oh my god another problem oh my god another problem um problems are part of your life it's pretty much a, a day by day of what we do mostly on on on, on this field we are I'm, i'm consider myself a professional problem solver that's what i, I do um and in every single problem that you tackle after single problem that you tackle you become better and better at fixing problems at a point that sometimes it becomes kind of a uh, addictive no you want to find solutions and you get better finding solutions um so the 2024 me compared to the 2022 uh, is a, a is a jose that pretty much have a lot of experience a lot around fixing problems and it will look at the problem with a completely different set of uh, perspective and, and experience what have you chosen and why for your second year so 2015 2015 well the situation economically in in the country didn't get very well um and at some point i had to make the decision of saying well what now right um uh, and i i had a ticket to europe uh, a flight ticket to europe because for holiday i think initially i got that ticket and i said well what if i stay and i did that was on 2015 i actually have <laughs> the flight ticket with me in my desk wow <laughs> it is here it's very look to 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 take a look once in a while um so that's what i did i had the opportunity i saw it as an opportunity to to start I'm not gonna say start from scratch uh because i i don't think you ever start from scratch you start with like i said with a different perspective and a different approach at things um and it was something that i don't regret uh the the experience of working in a in a different country in a different continent in a different language uh, give you uh so many dimensions and and lessons that i don't think i would ever uh, have experienced if i uh, decided to stay who knows i don't know um but um that was my experience on 2015 landing in in barcelona uh, and i chose barcelona because i said well If I'm going to try, I'm going to try in a city that is fascinating. And I remember reading uh, books, watching documentaries all over the internet, uh, friends that I had in Barcelona. And I said, like, that's something that I have to meet. I have to experience living in, in Barcelona. So that pretty much is the place that I decided to land um, and start this new era of my life, which is, I was talking to a friend today. I said, like, you know how you measure years now? like pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, I measure my life on before 2015 and post-2015. So that definitely sets a, a mark in my life. Well, absolutely. And and the fact that you have your flight ticket on your desk says that it it's a very significant moment in your in your life. Um perhaps to delve into it a little bit more, why 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 did you keep the the flight ticket? You know why is one of those things that you look at and when when you face a a difficult situation a different problem or some days it's not a good day it's a day where you are just blue and I look at that ticket and immediately takes me to to that moment in life and I and I measure I don't know if measure is the right word but you do an evaluation of your life before and and, and it gives you a, a for me it gives me a I don't know what it is. It's a it's a rush of a dopamine and adrenaline that says, you know what? Look at all the things that have happened that takes you here, uh, and it's pretty much like a surrealistic point of view when you realize you're. I don't know if if you ever happened that you're walking through a street in a country or in a different city, and you look up and you look say like, can I believe that I'm here? 
do I believe that, that I'm, I'm, I'm actually experiencing this? And that's pretty much that my connection to, to with that ticket. No, can I, can I believe that I'm here? Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's just something that you look and you, I, I just smile and, and I carry over. Do you feel like that is an important um, thing to be cognizant of in DevOps when you're faced with challenges? How important is it to have those things that you look back on and you think that that is something to keep me going? Is it a challenging challenging industry in DevOps? And, and do you feel like that is important for other people, other DevOps practitioners to, to think about? I think so. Uh, like I said, we if you abstract our, our definition of our role, we are problem fixers. You're always tackling a different problem. And I don't know how much percentage it is, but I can tell you that a big percentage of how you tackle a problem uh, and, and actually uh, succeed at uh, fixing it is from the attitude point of view. Um, you can jump in a call with a lot of people with a bad attitude to the problem, and that's not adding to the solution, right? Uh, so I definitely think that uh, jumping on a problem with a smile, with a happy face, with a coffee in your hand, whatever it makes you um, have, a, not, I'm not going to say happy, whatever it makes you the, the attitude of, right, let's take it as an adventure, no? let's take it as a, as a as something that very interesting that is happening and let's see how we tackle it. No? cannot look at every problem like, oh my God, again, we have to do this. And then if it's not fun, if it's not interesting, um, if you don't find the appealing to, to, to fixing the problem, then I'm not going to say that you already lost the battle, but definitely it's not going to be uh, enjoyable, not for you and not for the people who are in there. No, if you're in a lead position, you have to inspire for the position of saying like, guys, this is interesting. This is very cool that it's happening. Let's fix it and make sure that not happen again, for example. Or let's let's find a way to to, to look the the uh, most optimal solution, for example, if you're on that uh, field. So I do feel that it is very important for you to find whatever it is, your, your flight ticket or whatever you can put in your desk to connect on that before you actually do whatever you have to do on your daily life that is you need to fix. When it comes to these problems at work and uh, being uh, doing software engineering, how often is it that you have a problem that is the same or are problems always unique? And it, does that add to the excitement and the adventure that each problem is unique? Oof. Maybe I'm very lucky that I haven't found like identical problems, uh, problems Sometimes they, they look the same, but there is always a unique perspective, something very uh, different that makes it, like I said, a, a, a different kind of adventure. If you find a problem that is the same, uh, and, and then, then it's like very easy, no? It's like, sure, you just throw the, the same solution at it. But uh, maybe, maybe it's my position and maybe it's my, my role or my area of business. I don't know what it is. Uh, that is always something different. It's so always something new uh, that you, uh, because it's not always a problem. Uh, it, it, a problem is a, might not be the right word, it's a challenge. And a challenge could be something that you need to fix. It could be something that you need to make better. It might be something that it doesn't have a solution at the moment. It's, it's something that you need to automate. It's something that you need to create value for the business by providing a technology solution, no? Um, so problem my, is, is a word that many people avoid saying, and they prefer to, to use something else. Um, and that's pretty much the dynamic, no? The dynamic could be that you have something broken. The dynamic could be that you have something that could be better. Or uh, the dynamic is that there is nothing for, you identify something and you say like, what if we create something new? What if we uh, decided to create something that have to do this and this and this and this, and you have more business value? Um, all those uh, dynamics are uh, exciting and they have a, a right combination. No, I think the, 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 um, the tricky part is how do you get a balance of uh, a chunk of each 
per year, for example, no? And there are years who are more about innovating or are years who are more about fixing and there are years where are more renovation, for example. So it's the category of the, the, the challenge that you have uh, that makes the, the dynamic very appealing. Let's move on to your final year and what have you chosen and why? Oh, 2016. I still remember that call uh, asking me if I was interested to move to Glasgow. I said, like, where is that? <laughs> Never heard about that city. I heard about Scotland. I heard about uh, the, uh, the Scottish weather and the, the, the beautiful country that it is. But Glasgow was not in, in, in my top of mind. Um, and when when they said, like, it's JP Morgan, I said, like, sure. <laughs> of course, no. Uh, and, and that moved me where I am now, uh, living in Glasgow and Scotland. That was 2016, and this year is going to be eight years of that, no? And if I put it in perspective, uh, I'm from the capital of Venezuela, so I used to live in the capital 10 years, so it's going to be almost more time that I have lived in, in Scotland rather than in the capital where I was originally born. Um, and the, the movement to, to JP Morgan and to Scotland has been completely... Uh, transform everything to a new, new level, right? Um, if, if Europe was a, a, a fantastic shock of uh, diverse ways of thinking and, 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 and cultural, this is, this is the major league, no? This is a, a complete environment first in English for me, um, which it, it makes a switch in your brain of how to think. And in JP Morgan is massive, no? You you have people working from every, I had the opportunity to work for people with every single part of the world. Uh, I can wake up talking to, to China uh, and go to bed talking to New York. Uh, in every single location at a different perspective, a different way of thinking uh, and a different dimension. So if, if uh, like you said, like I, I see the, the life as an adventure, this is the most branching uh, path that I can find, no, and you and, and you never get bored. You jump into this path and say like, what if we turn here and turn that and turn? You have all the transportations that you can imagine to to jump into different rides uh, and 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 have a wonderful time. So so that's how that's why 2016 is uh, pretty much highly significant uh, set up about a highly significant milestone in my life. What would you say is maybe your proudest moment whilst working for JP Morgan? Oh man, you you put it high difficult. <laughs> I, I don't think that is a a, a, a moment. Uh, I, I I can tell you that I still remember looking up at the the the, the person who took my picture to 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 get my ID, mm -hmm. and and like I told you, it's it's, a, it's something that it records in your memory, no? I, I remember the first time that I that I jumped into the office. I remember the person who came down to 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 pick me up. Um, and in that moment, when, when you smile and you look at the camera and you say like, "This is happening," no, I think that's pretty much when I felt the the most proud of it. It's like, so this is the beginning, no? This is the this is my ticket to to actually jump into whatever ride or whatever path I need to follow. That's that's what I remember. How have you applied your learning experiences from 2012 starting your own business 2015 moving to barcelona how have you applied all those experiences to this time at, at, at jp morgan on every single every single call every single day um every single conversation you see mirrors or i see mirrors of uh, people, challenges, problems, situations that somehow I, I face in the past, and I have a terrible memory. I tell you that I, I I don't I don't even remember people's name. It's very hard for me. But when it comes to to situation, it's very funny. My my brain just remembered to be in that situation before. So like, huh? I face that analogies, for example, that works very well for me. No, I remember immediately something that happened and. I immediately translate that to, to, let me tell you a story. I was living in this place and I had this and then it's a very similar situation. And what we did there was, um, 
and it's, it's fascinating, no? Because I work with people with backgrounds, multiple different backgrounds, artists, philosophers, uh, it doesn't matter what science they are. And, and the more diverse the, 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 the pool of people I'm working with, uh, the more interesting solutions we find to the, to the problems, no? And, and it doesn't matter where the, the learning comes from or where the experience comes from, um, you can always port, it's portable, the, the, the experience to, to tackle the problem. Um, and I find that fascinating uh, uh, when, when, I, when I have to reference some episode of my life, it might not be something that I was working on engineer, it could be anything else that I was doing um, to, to find a, a more suitable solution. They would say that um, software engineering um, is quite a desirable profession right now for newbies in the industry, but also people that might wish to, you know, re-explore job opportunities, you know, perhaps it, even into their later career. What advice would you give to them as a newbie, as a new starter in, in this kind of world of software engineering? What advice would you give them? Get starting by problems, small problems at the beginning. The moment that your brain celebrates the solution of one tiny problem, that's it. It's, it's, a, it's a drop of dopamine that that fixing problem will release in your brain and that will get you to the next problem. What I've seen from people who are starting in this career is that they try to create a very complex application from the beginning. I want to create a new social network. And it's like, you can do it. Definitely you can do it. I'm not saying that you, you, you are not capable of. What I'm saying is that the struggle and the, and the, the complex of that problem potentially will demotivate you and say like, oh, that's impossible. You know what? Just drop it. And they just drop it because maybe you you were not able to to define yourself uh, a path of an evolution of problems that you have to continue tackling so that would be my my advice find yourself someone a mentor or a, a friend who is in the industry and ask the question look what's the most simple problem that i can fix do you think it's relevant for me to start learning something new uh, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't matter the language. It doesn't matter the framework. It doesn't matter the technology. You just start with one. Put the name that you want. Um, it's not the thing that you need to learn. The thing that you need to learn is how to tackle a problem in any possible way, and then just do it again and try to fix it in a different way, and then pick up another problem, and then pick up another, and then pick up another. Um, I said that that would be my my main advice. Find someone in the industry that can guide you and just trying to understand that celebrate quick victories so you get hooked into the motivation of finding new and new challenges. What's your goal for 2024? What would be your goal? It could be personal, professional. What, what do you feel like you would like to achieve in this year? Hmm, very good question. I, I definitely want to to spend more time on doing the things that I like. Uh, and, and like you said, uh, traveling is something that I definitely enjoy because it gave me multiple perspectives around the, the world uh, and, and how to see perspectives. So definitely traveling more. Um, I want to attend more conference. <laughs> Every time I jump in a conference, uh, it's fascinating, not from the networking point of view, but what you learn and, and the things that you um, different topics that you have the ability to to to, to watch. Uh, so more conference. Um, spending more time with the family. Uh, that's something that is starting to to to, to pay. It's a debt that I have to, to start paying off. Uh, spending more time with the friends, spending more time with the family. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I, I haven't defined like a, a roadmap, completely roadmap. I, there is something that I do every year that I define the, the, the my end of year resolutions. I am very um, ritual in that sense. I have my, my ritual of writing my, my 10 things. Um, so there is that, it's spending time with the family, 
traveling more and definitely doing more more conference. Awesome. Well, speaking of conferences, you'll be at DevOps Live in March. And um, what do you hope to to either learn or impart yourself at the event? Learn from anyone, everyone. Uh, I'm looking forward to see the agenda and start, you know, doing my my. Okay, you, 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 you. Uh, stretching hands. Uh, it's fantastic. My favorite time of the conference is going into the breaks, coffee breaks, and start saying like, hello, how are you? My name is Jose. And then start interacting and, and learning for, for, from new things. Uh, um, because it's in those conversations when you start uh, comparing, uh, look, uh, do you have this problem? Do you have this problem? And it's like learning from each other, no? Uh, so that's pretty much what I'm looking forward. To, to introduce uh, myself to, to other people, learn from other people uh, what they have to offer uh, and see what is out there. This is a very fast evolving uh, field. Every single week you have something new, mostly not right now with AI and all the things that is happening. Every two weeks you have to, to, to catch up. So a conference like that is fantastic to pretty much realize what is trending, what are the things that people are like jumping into uh, or are discarding and saying like don't don't even try that i have already tried and failed on on that aspect so that's pretty much my my biggest uh, the thing that i'm most mostly looking forward awesome well as a speaker and also obviously as a as a visitor that also gets to take part in the conference agenda and the networking opportunities i'll be very much looking forward to hearing about your experience at devops live in march so thank you so much jose for taking the time today thank you Stuart. thank you for the invitation